Good evening. Welcome to BizWorld. Malaysia's economy grew moderately at 0.7% in the first quarter of 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and implementation of the Movement Control Order, MCO. Bank Negara Malaysia said after a steady expansion in the first two months of the quarter, economic activity came to a sharp downshift with the implementation of the MCO on March 18th. Headline inflation remained modest in the first quarter, averaging at 0.9%. For 2020, average headline inflation is likely to turn negative, largely to the projection of significantly lower global oil prices. This trajectory will be dependent on global oil and commodity price developments, as well as evolving demand conditions. On the exchange rate, the ringgit depreciated by 4.9% against the greenback during the quarter under review. As at May 12, non-resident portfolio outflows and the ringgit depreciated by 5.8% against the US dollar in 2020. Moving forward, BNM said the economy is expected to gradually pick up in the second half of this year as containment measures are eased and the MCO is lifted. Meanwhile, the central bank has upsized the Special Relief Facility, SRF, to 10 billion ringgit to cater for all of the applications approved by participating financial institutions. As at May 4th, more than 21,000 applications have been approved, amounting to 10 billion ringgit. The SRF beneficiaries include SMEs in the tourism industry, uh, those running budget hotels and travel agencies, young SMEs uh, with less than three years in operations, and also SMEs who are not existing customers of banks, contrary to earlier reports. The demand for the SRF has been strong, and banks have approved more than 21,000 applications amounting to about 10 billion ringgit up to 4th May this year. Given the exceptional demand, we have upsized the SRF to 10 million ringgit. The central bank governor also said demand has been overwhelming, with the earlier announced 5 billion ringgit SRF allocation taken up quickly. It would benefit over 9,000 SMEs, preserving more than 200,000 jobs. In the first quarter of this year, Dr. Noor Shamsia said 62 billion ringgit worth of financing had been collectively distributed to SMEs, of which 48 billion ringgit is for working capital purposes. The government will be announcing a six-month economic recovery plan by the end of this month. International Trade and Industry Minister Dato Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali said the plan will help mitigate the impact on businesses and resuscitate a country's economy post-COVID-19. The EME sector is among the sector most negatively impacted. The cumulative losses incurred by the sector is estimated at 7.28 billion ringgit of GDP, while the impact to exports is expected at 29.12 billion ringgit. The entire e, &E industry in Malaysia, including the local large companies and SMEs, is part of the global supply chain. The e, e sector is the backbone... Dr. Sri Azmin said this while addressing a webinar by the Electrical and Electronics Productivity Nexus today. He added that to mitigate the pandemic's adverse impact on the economy, the country has resumed almost all of its economic activities. The senior minister also called upon businesses, especially SMEs, to look at the present challenges as an opportunity to accelerate digitalization, as that is the best way forward. AirAsia Group may increase airfares if social distancing is imposed for onboard aircraft in light of COVID-19. Its executive chairman, Dato Kamaruddin Maranum, however, said the hike will be minimal. I rasa sekarang ni kos yang ada kita dah jual dah tiket kita itulah tiket dia so tak ada penambahan kita tak fosi penambahan. Mana tiket yang dijual ni tak ada penambahan lah. So far tak ada. 
tak ada dalam perancangan kita kan tapi yang untuk future untuk penjualan tu mungkin ada lah untuk yang untuk yang future kita kita pun tengok tertakluk atas uh, arahan kerajaan kalau kerajaan uh, mengeluarkan arahan yang uh, apa restrict kita punya ni jadi kos tu mungkin kita kata okey kita tak boleh ni kita kena tambahkan kalau selagi tak ada restriction tak ada apa insyaallah tak ada He said this after contributing donations worth 50,000 ringgit through A-Class in collaboration with ST Rosham Mart. Currently, AirAsia only operates eight domestic flights, particularly connecting Kuala Lumpur to Sabah and Sarawak. Previously, the International Air Transport Association suggested that social distancing is required for passengers on board aircraft. Malaysia Airlines and Malindo Air, in concurring with the proposal, would raise airfares by up to 54 per cent. And that's all the time we have for BizWorld. I'm Raymond Goh. Thank you for watching and keep on tuned to TVTiga.